Hello, this is Matthew with Technomicon Media, and this week's Game Tech article is Star Wars The Old Republic on a Live Server. For the full article, please visit us at www.technomicon.com and enjoy the review. So the very first thing you're going to do uh, before you actually create your character is choose your alignment, um, of course, between the, uh, the Republic and the Sith Empire. Uh, basically light side versus dark side if you want to think about it that way and um, you start off uh, picking your class and um, I just want to briefly talk about classes real quick uh, there are four main classes and then at level 10 you pick a second sort of round of, of two choices within your class and, th and these choices that you make pertaining to your class is, is not changeable later so once you decide to be, say, a tank versus a, a melee damage dealer or a damage dealing sorcerer versus a, a melee lightsaber wielder, those, those changes are permanent and you won't be able to go back to it later. So really there's, there's eight classes to choose from, That's you know, four initially and then you get two choices, one of two choices later on, which are, these are all permanent decisions that you're going to need to make. So of course for character creation you can pick from races and um, your gender and um, I wanted to go with something that, that felt like the dark side, you know, that, that sort of had a, a darker, more sinister appearance and, and that's why I went with this race. And of course once you pick your race there's there's lots of customization that you can do within, within each now, you know, selection. So it? here I've selected a male and, and you can change the body type and the, the head features and the hairdo and, and everything that you could possibly want to do with your character, which is pretty cool. And here we have questing and specifically combat quests in Star Wars The Old Republic. Uh, most of the quests that players are going to be doing are combat related. Um, even missions that are more covert operations or retrieving items or finding contacts will, will always require some sort of combat for the most part to get to. And um, just showing off some of the Sith Inquisitor abilities. Uh, one of my favorite abilities is actually called Seath, even though it's a sort of a out of combat regeneration ability it's pretty awesome so a lot of combat is like this and if you notice I have a, a second character with me and that character is, is one of my companions and companions are in a combat context just like players they can be healed buffed they have their own threat table the the companion that I'm using is actually a a tank related type character he holds very good aggro for me and um, I'm just keeping him alive while I take down this elite boss usually enemies with a yellow gold border in Star Wars the Old Republic are, are elites and harder than average you know some more than others and so for quest updating it's pretty cool um, Basically, often quests that are updated will occur in real time with little drop droids that come down and, and tell you what's going on. And you can see that right here. The little droid is giving me some schematics of what's going on with the quest and updating it for me. So chat interactions in Star Wars The Old Republic is a very interactive process. And the main way for, the only way for players to modify their standing uh, alignment with the dark or the light side and based upon uh, chat decisions things like your alignment with the dark side as well as the way your companions uh, take notice of you changes as well so here I'm demonstrating uh, a chat interaction that's changing both my dark side faction standing as well as my companion standing. Uh, my companion seems to feel best when I make evil decisions and, and that's sort of the it's bad to be good or it's good to be bad type scenario going on. And here we go. More dark side. 
And the thing about chat interactions is they affect, you know, the quest that you're currently on as well as future quests. So decisions you make in these chat interactions will affect not just what's going on in the present, but but will it also be affecting what occurs in the future. If you decide to kill somebody or save somebody or lie to one person or turn them into another. And here we're taking a look at ship features for Star Wars The Old Republic. Um, this specifically is the ship type for the Sith Inquisitor. Um, players will get the ship I believe around level 15 or you know just after leaving their second planet which is pretty cool and your character is pretty excited when when they get it and I was pretty excited to get it because there's certainly a lot of very cool features on the ship which I'm gonna go into so here we're actually on the ship and and that door right there was to exit back into orbit um, the ship itself contains all of your companions and I'll point out that you get a new companion when you get the ship, that little sort of annoying droid there. But um, there's multi multiple communication arrays in the ship, uh, hollow terminals and whatnot. Uh, here we have your bank vault, which is accessible uh, in the ship. And this, this bank vault is accessible in, in many locations, not just on the ship. But um, it's the same vault that you'll access in cities and whatnot. Think of it as just like a bank, a bank tab. But I'm just quickly uh, going to reverse engineer an item, which is a pretty cool feature, which I'll talk about later. So on the ship, you have uh, primary points of interest are the, the main deck, which has the hollow communicator, and then the bridge, which has the uh, galaxy map. And right here is a little quest indicator for ship-to-ship -ship combat missions. So here is the galaxy map, and the galaxy map is pretty pretty cool because when you scroll over certain regions it'll show you what quests you have for specific planets if you have any so that's a very nice feature if you kinda get lost with what you're working on and just wanted to quickly show the cool factor of space travel because you actually get to see that that jump to light speed going from one planet to the next and it's a pretty cool effect so I'm just going to quickly select a planet and travel there and you can see me leaving the planet I'm on jumping to light speed yep and pretty cool and there you go so here we have crew skills in um, Star Wars the Old Republic and the way crew skills work is um, you get a little additional tab in your main UI and it's in the shape of a diamond and all the crew skill trainers and vendors have this little corresponding icon with them so the way crew skills work for the most part is is they're taken on by your crew members and not by you um, the exceptions to this are, are certain types of crew skills related to gathering if a crew member that that's with you is is on a mission currently then you can gather things yourself but if your crew member is actually with you in the outdoor environment then they'll do the gathering instead of you and um, you can send send out multiple crew members on on different types of missions and you know I have one crew member producing an item and I'm gonna send another crew member on a different type of mission related to a different type of crew skill and the restrictions on crew skills seems to be at least for the level that I am or possibly it's related and limited to the amount of crew members you have I have two crew members at the moment is is three total crew skills and only one crew skill can be a crafting item production type crew skill but the thing about item production crew skills is you can queue multiple jobs which is pretty cool so if you make an item you can make multiple items without having to constantly check back with your crew member and and here's the codex entry and and it describes each of the types of crew skills and and what they're used for and what will complement them complement them the best you know in terms of which gathering skill suits which crafting skill and so on and so forth 